Well, the Chiefs just surprisingly placed one of their receivers on injured reserve and are bringing back another one with potentially another one even set to return in the near future. And I'm not sure if that helps the wide receiver room overall or makes the waters more murky. So we got to talk about that as well as process through the Chiefs offense that continues to struggle with miscues, turnovers, drops, and penalties despite a rather convincing win yesterday against the Patriots. So let's get into this game recap, takeaways, and more. But first, how about those all right, first up, after the Chiefs and Patriots game on Sunday, Andy Reid mentioned that wide receiver Sky Moore is the only injury to report on, saying that he had to leave the game early due to hurting his left knee, and it swelled up on him a little bit. Well, today around 3.30 p.m., the Chiefs surprisingly made a brief announcement that they placed Sky Moore on IR, which means he will miss at least the next four games, which could take him into the postseason. And while Sky has definitely underperformed this season in year two, it sucks to see an injury like this happen to anybody on the team, regardless of how they are performing on the field. After all, Sky is a good kid with a great demeanor. He's just struggled out there this season when many expected him to make a pretty big sophomore leap just hasn't happened. And regarding if Sky is out for the entire season or could potentially return sometime in the playoffs, like I just mentioned, I don't have any idea. Hopefully we get some clarity when Andy Reid speaks to the media on Wednesday. But what that does mean is a spot is now open on the Chiefs 53 man roster and Matt Derrick of Chiefs Digest reported that wide receiver Justin Ross has been removed from the exempt list and takes more spot on the active 53 man roster, so the Chiefs are back up to 53 players and six receivers. And I'm not honestly sure how much we will see from Justin Ross here immediately. After all, the first half of the season before his suspension, he caught just three passes for like 37 yards. On top of that, McCole Hardman's window to return from IR could open up this week as well. He had surgery, I believe, on his thumb. And per McCole Hardman himself on Twitter, he said he would be back before the end of the regular season. So the Chiefs are going to have to juggle that as well. You have Justin Ross back. McCole Hardman could return soon. You have MVS taking less snaps. Sky now on IR. Lots of shakeups happening in the wide receiver room. And honestly, maybe it's for the better. Either way, there are some decisions that need to be made in the wide receiver room. And we will talk more on that as this video goes on. Trust me. Another injury scare I saw was tight end Travis Kelsey, who went down awkwardly on his elbow, hopped up in a lot of pain. He was on the sideline, visibly in pain. And here's the quick statement Andy Reid gave about it. And he kind of got, got a little stinger in there came out for a bit, but he went back in, yeah. So it's obviously not as serious as Sky Moore's, though we will see this week if Kelsey lands on the injury report at all or not, and how that affects him, if at all, moving forward. And before we get into this game recap and break down the key takeaways, it's worth looking at some of the positives from the aftermath of this game first and foremost, right after I let you know that I finally have some new t-shirt designs up in my merch store. Some of these are long overdue. We now have a That's Who shirt in honor of Pat Who, That's Who, El Travador, with a big old mustache from training camp on there. More, more, more in honor of Kelsey's viral clip last season of him repeatedly saying that. And then this one here in honor of the best receiver in the room, one of the best rookies in the league, Rashi Rice, 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 baby. And snagging some merch is a great way to support the channel while getting something back in return. And with that, let's get into these positive takeaways following the Chiefs win in New England. On offense, Mahomes finally broke his six game streak of throwing for less than 300 yards, throwing just over that yesterday with a couple of TDs as well as a couple of interceptions, but shh. Rasheed Rice now has seven touchdowns on the season, which is the most receiving touchdowns of any Chiefs rookie in history. CEH had a monster game recording four receptions for 64 yards and a TD as well as 13 carries for 37 yards. Jarek McKinnon was technically credited with a passing TD to Rasheed Rice, which was only McKinnon's second career pass attempt and was his first completion as well as a touchdown with that completion. And with that, McKinnon is the seventh player in franchise history to have a rushing touchdown, passing touchdown, as well as a receiving touchdown. Then on defense, Drew Tranquil has now tied a single season high five sacks with one and a half he got on Zappi. Another linebacker, Willie Gay Jr., recorded his first interception of the season in the fourth of his career. Then on special teams, while Butker did sadly miss his first ever field goal of the season, he made two more with one being a hell of a 54-yarder. Then Tommy Townsend had an incredible punt with Echo Boydo downing it at 
the one. Now, let's get into this game recap and takeaways. The Chiefs won the toss and deferred with the Patriots going three and out because the Chiefs defense is great and New England's offense sucks more than 69 vacuum cleaners going at once. Then on KC's first play, Mahomes connected with Noah Gray on this beautiful 32 yard connection, which was unfortunately Gray's one of only two targets on the day, despite the fact that he actually knows how to catch a football. A few plays later, Mahomes hit Kadarius Tony on a shallow crosser and he fought all the way up the sideline basically to the three, but yet again, the Chiefs shot themselves right in the foot with a penalty in the red zone that they were unable to overcome, but not so fast because it wasn't a typical penalty. It wasn't really anybody's fault. It was a literal load of horse shite. Offensive pass interference was called on Rasheed Rice because the DB ran into him. That was certainly an interesting call to say the least, you freaking bums. Anyway, that moved the team back to the 30 yard line and they had to settle for three. However, Harrison Butker surprisingly sadly missed a 39 yard field goal, his first miss of the entire season. Zappi started heating up on the second drive though with Henry catching one up the middle of the field followed by Devontae Parker with Henry getting lit TF up by Justin Reed on his first down catch here. And you can say what you want about Justin Reed at times, but this man does not shy away from contact. He loves to hit people. Sneed then gave up a tough completion and coverage on Douglas, but thankfully, Derek Naughty was able to get to Zappi, which led to the Pats eventually missing a field goal of their own to keep this a high scoring game of zero to zero. The next drive for KC though was a great one involving a solid play call, a screen pass to CEH for 48 yards. And with him breaking a tackle for even more yards, this made for the longest reception of his NFL career. Then after a Rashi Rice catch made it first and goal, Andy Reed dug deep down into his bag on this play where Joe Tooney snapped the ball for the first time since I believe 2020 and McKinnon actually took the direct snap, popping it to Rasheed Rice on a reverse for the score. And McKinnon said after the game that in practice, this was a handoff from him to Rice every time. But in the huddle, McKinnon made sure to let Rice know that he was gonna pop it to him so Rice could get a receiving touchdown instead of a rushing touchdown, which helped him break the Chiefs rookie receiving touchdown record. A pretty cool gesture from McKinnon there, though I will say that little pop pass looked a bit sketch there for a second as Rice almost bobbled it before taking it in for six. And from there, both teams took turns going three and out with the Chiefs defense bending, but not breaking on third and one. And Leo Chanel ran like this, ah! batting the pass down to force a punt. But KC followed suit soon after due to Mahomes getting sacked on second down with Trey Smith not being able to hold on long enough and they could not overcome it. Tommy Townsend then had a pretty terrible punt that went only 35 yards to give the Patriots favorable field position. Drew Tranquil sacked Zappi on the next play though to back them up to a very long second and 17, but Hunter Henry exists coming in clutch on third and 12. Parker then made a great play on an underthrown pass up the right sideline by an under pressure Zappi throwing off his back legs, catching it for 19 yards, helping move the chains again on third and five. Then on fourth and a one, this was nasty. The Patriots went for it and Zappi connected once again with Hunter Henry for a touchdown on a nice play action pass that depressingly tied the game. And the stress wouldn't end there because on the very next play, Mahomes targeted Blake Bell in the middle of the field and he got it wrestled away from him, leading to a tough interception that gave the Patriots the ball back inside the 10 yard line. And that play is probably one Mahomes shouldn't have thrown to Blake Bell there at all, but he could have also been a bit more aggressive himself going out after the ball, and a play like this sort of describes the Chiefs season thus far, as not only do the Chiefs pass catchers lead the league in drops, but are also dead last in converting contested catches, a damn shame. Anyway, that turnover put Casey's defense in a very tough spot with a couple of Elliott rushes, getting them up to the three, and Zappi creating some wild magic here, spinning out to the left, getting out of pressure on third and goal, connecting for a second Hunter Henry touchdown that was thankfully Santa Maria Jesus called back due to a hold on the Patriots O-line and they had to settle for three instead, bringing the score 10 to seven, Chiefs trailing by three. This next drive was an important one for Mahomes and company and honestly, this may have been their best drive all game long. They converted three third downs on this drive with the first one being a third and eight because on third and three, Jawan Taylor, believe it or not, guys, I know it's hard to believe this, but he was flagged for a false start. Hey, I'm not surprised.
<laughs> Thankfully though, Mahomes threw an absolute dime to Justin Watson for 34 yards, a beautiful connection. Then on third and nine a few plays later, Mahomes scrambled up in the pocket buying time and hit Rashi Rice up the middle for 21 yards. And I want you to look at Kelsey here on this replay because this is the type of stuff that does not show up on the stat sheet. Kelsey is scrambling here to get open and sees Rice sitting in a soft spot and he immediately cuts left to get out of the way and make sure people follow him and Rice stayed open. Kelsey's awareness out there on scramble drills is better than pretty much anyone ever, and I'll go to my grave saying that one. And shortly after that, Casey faced a third and one. CEH helped move the chains on a short run there. Then Jarek McKinnon caught a touchdown pass on another nice play design in the red zone, bringing the score up 14 to 10 just before halftime. Now, Casey got the ball back to start the second half, and this drive was stressful enough to make me want to take a smoke break, and I don't even smoke. For starters, Rice had a nice catch and run up the left sideline, spinning for more yards, and the ball actually got knocked out, resulting in a fumble that Rice was thankfully able to jump back on top of. Then, two plays later, Mahomes connected with Sky for his first catch of the game, and Sky also fumbled after he failed to protect the ball, but this time the Patriots recovered and returned it all the way into Casey territory. Thankfully though, there was a defensive holding penalty that negated the turnover and gave KC another chance. And while you could technically flag this for a defensive hold, I would personally have been fine with them not flagging it at all. But hey, it's been a wild couple of weeks with KC and the refs in game, so I'm gonna gladly take that one there. Thank you very freaking much. After that, Rashi Rice came up big again on third and 10, scooping this Mahomes pass and securing it as he went to the ground. Then Richie James snagged his one and only catch of the day for 17 yards. And the crazy part here is Richie James only played two snaps on offense yesterday, the least of any other receiver, yet still had as many yards as MBS and 12 more than Kadarius Tony. Meanwhile, Tony played 26 snaps and MBS played 22. Andy Reid said in his presser with the media today that Richie has to play more than two snaps and said it's his own responsibility to have him out there on the field more. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see an uptick in James's snaps here very soon, uh, especially considering Sky is now on IR. But anyway, shortly after that play, happened, Mahomes lofted a pretty routine would-be touchdown pass up to Travis Kelsey that was dropped to the disappointment of many, but Kelsey definitely saw that shot to the ribs incoming and chose to protect himself rather than making the play. Some would call that a business decision, but I would rather have a healthy Kelsey for the postseason than a touchdown there against the Patriots. Kelsey is honestly already beat up as it is with them continuing to lean heavily on the 34 year old tight end all season long with the wide receiver room underperforming as a whole outside of the rookie Rice. So I get that one, but the more frustrating one for me was after the shovel pass to Kelsey, Mahomes went back to him on third down and Kelsey flopped pretty badly on this play here trying to sell a penalty. And I think the reason why is because Kelsey didn't think he could get to the ball in time, maybe even going the wrong direction on this freelance. So he instead opted for the flop to try and draw a flag, but it didn't work and Casey settled for three instead, making it a seven point game. And while that was a bit of a disappointing drive there for the offense, points are points and Willie Gay exists, picking off Bailey Zappi on the very first Patriots play of the next drive. A bad decision there by Zappi, but I like that. And it set Casey up with the ball around the five yard line. Casey didn't waste the opportunity either because on the second play, Patrick Mahomes started to scramble left and lofted one up over the linebacker, I believe it was in coverage and the four foot 11 Clyde Edwards Elaire made a leaping high pointed hobbit hop for the score and with that I'm just gonna say it man CEH is officially the third best receiver on the team outside of Kelsey and Rice so line that man up in the slot and let him feast I mean what could it really hurt to try at the end of the day? Spoiler alert, not that much. All jokes aside, the Chiefs defense had a great three play series after that with Chris Jones stopping a run for a two yard loss. Zappy's pass got batted up on second down and was almost picked. And then cornerback Jalen Watson sacked Zappy on third down, something he never saw coming his way that resulted in a very quick three and out to which MVS did have a nice catch on a scramble drill, his only one of the day. CEH then had an impressive run up the left side immediately after and Harris and Butker kicked a massive 54 yard field goal to bring KC up 17 points. From there, things slowed down a bit as both teams took turns punting back and forth like ping pong for the rest of the third quarter and into the fourth with KC taking their foot off the gas here a bit and the Patriots offense continuing to play like the worst offense in the NFL playing against one of the best defenses in the NFL. And that brought us to the nine minute mark of the fourth quarter uh, with the Chiefs up by three scores and just needing to play some clean, safe, football to close things out, right? Well, 
wrong because on the first play of this drive, Mahomes hit Kadarius Tony right in the freaking bread basket, but the ball placement and field location was similar enough to the week one Lions matchup that I think Tony's PTSD flared up and forced him to drop yet another easy pass and gift the Patriots an INT. And while it wasn't a pick six, thank God, the Patriots scored just two plays later to bring the game within 10 points. And let me tell you what, Patrick Mahomes was visibly distraught on the sideline with Tony, but he was kind of just voicing it by himself on the bench, not yelling at Tony directly, but he was cursing a couple times saying, I just effing said it, man, which I took to mean. He told the guys in the huddle to protect the football at all costs because they were up by three scores. And honestly, I don't blame the frustration here. It was a perfect pass that led to the fourth drop of the day and yet another turnover. And while this never put the game in any real jeopardy for Kansas City, it's just another example of the little things not being done right by the offense. Turnovers, penalties, miscues, drops, etc. All little things that keep compounding week after week in these games and becoming bigger issues. And he was actually asked if there was any plans to sit Tony and take him out of the lineup until things get better and Here's what he had to say. Yeah, we'll just we'll see how things go. I'm I'm not down on Tony. He does some good things, man. He's a young guy, Adam. So we're we're not talking about somebody that uh, has been in this league a long time. Well, I'll say this: what Andy says to the media in a press conference publicly is one thing, but what is said and done behind closed doors is a whole different ordeal. With Sky on IR though, uh, I'm not sure we see a big dip in Tony's snaps. Anyway, back to the game because after that Patriots touchdown, the Chiefs were able to get a first down on third and five thanks to Rashi Rice. He's coming up clutch time and time again, as well as another thanks to Travis Kelsey. Uh, this play he banged his elbow up on. He was in pain, you could see him on the sideline. But after Mahomes got sacked for the third time on the day, Casey had to punt, though thankfully they were able to bleed like four and a half minutes off the clock. And that punt from Townsend was Perfection, chef's kiss, being down at the one yard line by Echo Boydo, absolutely incredible special teams play there. And Zappi was unable to make anything happen, turning the ball over on downs with two and a half minutes left in the game. And the Chiefs ultimately walked away with the W. So positives here, a win is a win is a win is a win. It's hard to win in this league and the Chiefs get one step closer to clinching the division and still remain alive for the one seed. The defense is still the real deal. It was great seeing both Drew Tranquil and Nick Bolton out there together. Sneed still looked awesome. Justin Reed was out there laying the wood. Special teams had its positives aside from the lone Butker miss and the one poor Townsend punt. Then on offense, Rashi is him. CEH had himself a D-A-Y. MVS and Sky barely played. If you look at the snap counts, they were both pretty low on there behind Rice, Justin Watson, and Tony, with Casey even using more 12 personnel, meaning Noah Gray had more snaps in their stead. The bummer here, though, is Noah Gray was barely targeted outside of that throw on the Chiefs' first draft. Drive. So some definite positives there, along with the fact that they put up 27 points on a solid New England defense, and they could have put up 35 if they wanted to there at the end. The not so positive part about the Chiefs offense, at least, is they still look pretty much like the same offense they have all season in regards to these little issues, the miscues, drops, penalties, turnovers. I mean, if there's no defensive holding call there to negate Sky Moore's fumble, that's three turnovers, nearly four, if Rice wasn't able to jump back on his own fumble just prior to Sky's. But thankfully, they were playing against the Patriots, so it ultimately ultimately didn't really matter, but against an actual playoff contender, this stuff is much harder to overcome and does not always result in a W. After the game, Mahomes said the offense made plays happen against a great defense with others stepping up at times due to Kelsey being doubled a lot. However, they're still looking to play a complete game offensively all four quarters. We started and I thought we did good in the, in the second half starting the game and then we kind of had some, some miscues here and there at the end and that includes myself. And so I'm trying to continue to have a full game of just excellent football is something that we'll continue to strive for. And hopefully a complete football game happens by the playoffs from the offense or better yet, maybe even on Christmas against the Raiders. It would be a very nice Christmas present for all of Chiefs Kingdom after all. And speaking of presents, Andy Reid gifted us some good news today saying that it looks like KC is getting running back Isaiah Pacheco back into the mix, a definite spark to the Chiefs offense. He said that not only will Pacheco be back at practice this week, but he's cleared and should also be good to play on Christmas against the Raiders unless there's a further setback. But right now, everything is looking positive from his minor 
cleanup surgery a couple weeks ago, and they even had clearance last week from the surgeon to go, but the Chiefs held him out one more week to be cautious. So let's freaking go, Isaiah Pacheco. It'll be good to have him back if everything keeps trending in the right direction. Anyway, with all that being said, how happy are you about the return of Pacheco? And what are your thoughts on Sky Moore surprisingly going to IR with Justin Ross, and McCole Hardman potentially returning soon. And lastly, how do you feel about the Chiefs offense right now with the postseason just a few weeks away and these issues still continuing to happen almost every single week? Let me know in the comments down below about all of that. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.